Hey guys, Sam here, and today we're going to be talking about just how we can get set up with Google Authentication. It's fairly straightforward, a lot easier than you're probably thinking it is right now, and I'm going to guide you through it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to go to the Google Identity page. I've put this in the link below. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward for you, uh, really a three-step process. So go to this link, and the first thing you're going to want to do is to configure your uh, a new project for whatever auth you're setting up. And I'm going to name this one Fast Pocket because that's the name of the project I'm working on. And we're going to um, give a product name. I'm going to call this Fast Pocket. This is what's going to be shown on the screen, which we see as we authenticate. And we get configuring a project for 3P authorization. This is going to take a little while. Okay, once that's done, we want to select web browser uh, for the auth client. And you might be tempted to just chuck in your normal website URL, but um, yeah, that's not going to work for this one. So what we're going to want to do is to chuck in a our actual uh, authorized origin, which will be uh, fastpocket.dev in my case. This will be whatever your... Uh, primary domain is, so nothing with a subdomain, just your straight up your, do your domain. Um, and that's to enable cause. And once that's done, you'll be brought to this page where you can see your client ID and your client secret. These two strings are what's really important. These are gonna be the things that we're gonna plug into uh, Pocketbase, which is going to allow us to actually make that authentication happen. So we're gonna take our client ID and plug that in here. We're going to take our secret ID and put it in here, and we're going to save these changes. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I'm good to go now. There is another step that we have to run through um, before we get going. So I'm going to show you exactly what we need to do now. So the next step is to go to your credentials page here and we'll load this up and you'll see that we actually have our, um, our keys created here. And for both of these ones, we're going to want to set up a redirect URL. This redirect URL is really important because it's what's going, going to tell Google where to send uh, uh, the user to once they've done their authentication. So in our case, we're going to go down to the authorized redirect URIs and we're going to add the URI. And for Pocketbase, we must have the uh, slash API slash O2 redirect as the authorized redirect URI. Um, and what's gonna happen here uh, from a, an architectural perspective, I'll, run, I'll quickly run you through exactly what's going go, what's going on here. So the way that this is working is with something called uh, SSE. So SSE is service end events. So these are, this is a pattern for being able to communicate with a server. So typically you would have a normal REST calls where you might have polling done on the client. SSE allows for real-time events to happen. And what our pocket-based client, which is our SDK is, basically saying when it's connecting uh, via OAuth is it's saying to the server, can you please send me um, any of your events that you're that you're going to receive? And the server's gonna receive any event that it receives back. In this case, it's gonna be OAuth. And the server also has the option to uh, basically unsubscribe it so the client so that it doesn't keep sending um, to the client. But in this way, the auth function is going to happen such that we the client is going to ask, um, can you please send me a notification once you get uh, authorized with Google? And then this, the server is going to send back, yeah, I've been authorized with Google. And then the user is going to be redirected. So that's where making this redirect URL um, or to redirect is really important because once the server receives that, it will on, on send it to the client. We'll just save that for now. 
and you'll need to do the exact same thing that I've done for OAuth client with the web client. Uh, so it needs to be for both of them. So now I think that we're ready to sort of jump into getting this flow actually set up. So I've already set up these buttons in FastPocket in order to uh, basically run a test. So we're just going to hit this in the guts and run a test. And here we're getting a fail to order authenticate error. Let's see where the issue is here. Um, so on this side of things, I have created additional fields in my collection. Uh, so when we're doing OAuth, the OAuth provider doesn't know about these additional fields that I've created in Pocketbase, so it's not going to do the authentication correctly. The option is, is you either delete these fields um, or you make them not required fields for your signup. Um, I personally, uh, just, I need those fields. So I deleted the field and then I ran an update after on the client side, um, to make those fields updated with the actual raw data. So let's take a look at the code that we're using. So basically the code that I've set up here is just to handle the Google sign up. So we've got our pb.collection user. Uh, yours will probably be users, I changed it to user. Uh, and then for auth with OAuth2, which is the method, we've got the provider Google, and we've got this create data. Now I'm using Next, Next.js, um, so this is all done client side, meaning it's on the browser, and the authentication is done on the browser. Uh, and I'm going to show you why because I think it might be relevant if you're using Svelte Kit or uh, Nuxt or any sort of uh, server combined with with client uh, web browser framework because Pocketbase doesn't or it plays funny with um, server side rendering so I'll just show you how to do that really quickly before I keep going through the code. So this is how uh, the authentication works directly in in Pocketbase with something like a Svelte, uh, Svelte kit where you've got the Svelte server sitting in the middle here uh, and we've got the Svelte client, in this case, a browser with um, an event source. So event source is the way that SSE um, communicates with the server. It is able to subscribe to the Pocketbase event source and uh, receive events directly from Pocketbase, um, but we need to do that by uh, essentially saying to from the client to directly to Pocketbase. We need to say that we want to subscribe and we want to do the authentication directly with Pocketbase as opposed to uh, through Svelte server or on Svelte server, uh, because if we do the authentication directly on Svelte server. Uh, for one, Svelte server won't have node out of the box, um, neither does Next.js, um, and I'm, I'm not sure about Nux, but you won't have access to event source because it's a browser library, um, meaning it's only available on the browser and you cannot use it for any node apps. So you would have to install a third party application, but Again, so you'd have to install a third party library, but if you do that, then you're also going to have trouble managing the sessions on that Svelte server. Uh, it's better to manage sessions via the cookies. And the way that I do it within Svelte server and within Next is I use cookies to manage the Svelte uh, the authenticated user, but because we're using event source, we can't manage the authenticated user directly from the server. So what we have to do is authenticate first on the client, then pass via a loading of the, um, of the, of the credential directly to a string, which then gets passed through to Svelte server. 
And then obviously once Pocket Base uh, hits Google, it will send a notification back to Svelte Client and then that will perform the auth, which I thought would be worth covering. Um, in terms of what happens uh, for actually creating a, a data for fields where they're required fields, you can create data alongside the auth request so it doesn't fail, um, like we saw that failure er earlier. And then um, after run a subsequent update, which is I think what we're gonna do. Yeah, so I just added in the pv.collection.user.update um, uh, along with the uh, meta tags for the, uh, for the Google auth record that we get back. And I think we're ready to test it. Um, you'll notice that I've also implemented this login with cookie function. The way that that function works is that I'm taking the string from the pocket base auth, loading it up, and then setting it so that it can be reused on the server side. Um, which is the pattern that Garni recommends. Um, any other way, you're just bringing a lot of headaches to yourself because you have to start setting up um, management for the user's session. Um, with cookies, all of this is sort of managed by the server. So this is my prefer preferred way of doing it. And I think we're about ready to test. So let's do our final tests and we'll see the auth happen. So here we go, sign up with Google. And it's sign me in and sign me up. So that's basically it guys, really powerful stuff. I think that uh, anyone who wants to improve the turnover of users into their app, like this is probably the easiest way that you can do that. Uh, the more steps that you add to your login flow, the less likely you're going to get users converting on your page. Uh, so if you're building SaaS, this is just like crucial. So just put it in there. I've also put this in fast pocket. So if you guys are interested in a Next.js uh, template that you can build pocket based apps out very, very quickly, check out fast pocket. It is the easiest way to build, um, you'll get set up very, very quickly. And I'm including a written user guide for how to do this over there. So yeah, check that out. And finally, if you guys are looking for more information around how to get started in Pocket Base, if you want to become a better developer, if you want to learn about different tools and different technologies uh, that are breaking the industry right now, follow my newsletter because that's where I'm doing my best work. Uh, I release it once every Thursday and it's usually the top news of the week alongside with my thoughts on that. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.